We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Slipcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? All right, Jared. To be honest, tired. Yeah. But good way, good way. Watched a lot of football. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Watched a lot of football, but what's good? How about you? Same. I'm a uh, a Sunday ticket holder now. That's on YouTube TV as it's no longer uh, under the uh, tyrann tyr tyrannical. That's the word I was looking for. The tyrannical hold of direct TV and is now under the tyrannical hold of the good people over at Google. <laughs> yes, uh, sir. But hey, at least I at least I can still watch TV when when you know there's a light drizzle outside. Wow. You, you always, you always yes. gotta you always gotta appreciate that. All right, Kyle, this is Scarlet and Grade. Uh, this is the episode in which hey, Woody's here. We got uh, Bulldoggy style here. We got down in the chat. I'm talking about. We got Nomad here. Uh, we have QB three here. We, we got a we got a little bit of a house going over here. We do. Let's let's go and roll it right into it. So this is our Scarlet and Grade episode. But before we talk about the Ohio State Youngstown State game, I'll call you Coach Nomad when you change your handle to Coach Nomad. Yeah. But let's look um, at a few few bullet points here from uh, Ryan Day's post game. I'm going to take the bullet notes uh, from uh, from our good friend Tony Gerdeman over at Buckeye Huddle here. So. Ryan Day post game here uh, asked about the offensive line. He said it's still a work in progress. Uh -huh. Would he like to evaluate? Would uh -huh. he like to evaluate Jared? No, not right now. He says. Would he like? Did, did Tony put evaluate in the chat? In the or was that elaborate? Yeah, it's supposed did, to be did you? He put evaluate. <laughs> okay, I was about to say, did you typo that or did Tony typo that? I control C and control V. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's fair. That's fair. I if Listen, that's one typo for Tony and 30,000 typos for me. Anyone who used to follow me on Twitter back when I used to be on Twitter. Or anyone who's in the Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com, uh, always be plugging, uh, will know uh, how much of a typo king I am. So uh, no no judgment mm -hmm. from me. Uh, but yeah, he doesn't want to uh, elaborate on the offensive line right now. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to publicly either if I were the coach. Yeah. I will be doing so publicly during the course of this episode, however. Yeah. I'll go, I'll go, I want to go into that more and more, uh, in our meat of our episode here, Jared, but, uh, yeah, we're just going to move on here. Uh, he said he's still not ready to make the final quarterback decision yet. Um, he said, but he does say it is, it is now time to consider giving one quarterback all of the number one reps day. It's, it's, it's coach time. day. It's time. coach day. It, it's time. We we all know, we all know. I mean, let's just Come on. let's just take a second and talk about it, Kyle. Um, I like Devin Brown. Um, I like Devin Brown even more about every third or fourth play. Uh, I think there's something incredibly special about Devin Brown, but his consistency is not there. That he is at time, he, he will make plays that make me literally go, Wow, holy crap, Devin, that was amazing! But it'll also make me go, Wow, Devin, he was wide open. What you doing, buddy? <laughs> um, I, I, and I think. If, 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 say, McCord has an insane rest of the year and decides to go to the NFL. An additional year of practice might be exactly what Devin Brown needs. Or if Devin Brown should choose to transfer at the end of the year, I think he'll be great. I think he has a great future ahead of him there. Uh, I just don't think his consistency is quite dialed in yet. And I think McCord, um, 
I don't know if I've seen the same level of spectacular play from McCord. It, and I say that mostly because Devin Brown's a little more mobile um, and therefore is a little bit better at getting out of the pocket. But McCord is consistent and I think much less likely to make a wrong play and is more willing to stand in the pocket and throw. Uh, I would say a knock on Devin Brown would be that Devin Brown's not is not as athletic as Devin Brown thinks he is. Uh, he thinks he can get outside of the pocket and make a play a lot more often than he uh, has proven that he actually can. Yeah, in the in the short or the small number of plays that we've seen with Devin Brown, I I would agree with that. It's not not as not as quick as he think he might be here so i think from what we've seen so far in two games i, th I think i think at this point it's you, you got to make the decision uh this week here day and just say that tom mccord is your quarterback right, but he's going to get the he's, he's going to get the first team snaps here but devin brown will get will get some play time uh throughout the year i think it's time to make that call internally i don't think there's any I don't think there's any need to make that call publicly before Notre Dame. Like, I, you just don't got to show the cards to Notre Dame. I think in the week yeah, leading up to Notre Dame, you let Notre Dame think that Devin Brown's also going to get reps just so they have to prepare for him. And then you can just never play him after that. Of course. Of course. Yeah. So there's still right, the um, speak, game mischief so speaking of, of So speaking of McCordy, he said that he likes how McCord came out of the gates playing well. Uh, got himself into a rhythm and showed that he can make some of those throws. And we and we saw it like when McCord is in that rhythm, yeah, he, he yeah. made some really good throws. Uh, but yeah, there's there's still some plays if you are being really nitpicky here. I think I think McCord at times definitely does get tunnel vision, doesn't yep. see the whole field. We saw a few plays like there's one definitely where he looked on one side. And then streaking down on the other side was Fleming. He had like three yards on on his uh, defender there, and if he just lobbed it over to the left side, Fleming could have made he's, a good play there. But he's just he has to get better. He's gonna have to get better. Time. Hopefully, it just comes with time here. He's gonna have to get better at his pre snap reads. He's gonna have to get better at his progressions. He's like thrown it into double coverage when he didn't appear to look anywhere else at times. Yeah. But he started two games. Like this is. This is young starter behavior. That's that's just what that is. It's it's, and, it's and something that gets better in time. And it's more important for him to get more snaps in here. Yeah. And and I and I hope that in next week's game against uh Western Kentucky, he gets a lot more snaps here. All right. Um some last things here that Coach Day talked about I wanted to mention about before we uh, grade uh, grade last weekend's game, and that's the running back here. Uh, Day says he's not sure how he sees the running back situation going this year when you only have sixty plays. And yes, Ohio State only had sixty plays this uh, this last weekend, which is very uncharacteristic in in the last how many years? Uh, he said there's not a lot of rushes to go around. They want they wanted to get him more touches. Um, I believe that's Henderson he's talking about. Uh, got to get, got to keep getting him the ball in space too. Ran downhill today. That was a good step. Yeah, and you look at the you look at the running backs here, Jared. Henderson five touches. Uh, Mine Williams six carries. Uh, Trainum six carries. It, it, there's just not a lot of there's just not a lot of plays to go around here, and it's it's. It's a good and a bad thing to have here. You got all this talent. You got this very talented rushing uh, room here, but just not enough snaps to go around to really get a, a running back in rhythm here, in my opinion. And they'd have more snaps if they here, here. Here's the irony. Here's the irony. If they were running the ball better and getting more first downs, there'd be more snaps. To run the ball more. Um, the offensive line, uh, you know, we'll go back to the offensive line because I think that's that's the big question mark on the team right now, right? Um, we'll go back to the offensive line. They're and like 
the Ohio State fan base, and I, and I'm not going to defend Josh Simmons because he's struggling. I'm not. So don't. Josh Simmons is struggling at left tackle. I'm not. I'm not right. going to pretend otherwise. Um. But n- n- the offensive line as a whole, as an entire unit, is not getting a push on running plays. They are not moving the other team off of the line. They simply are not doing it. And and I think, again, Josh Simmons has in many ways become like the fan favorite scapegoat. And that happens every year. It seems like one or two players get designated fan favorite scapegoat. But why, Nomad asks, that why... I assume you mean that the line isn't getting a push. I think they're uh, talent deficient, uh, I think, is is a big part of it. Uh, if I'm being honest, like uh, 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 three or four years of bad recruiting misses under Coach Stud um, really set back the offensive line. Um, I, I don't know why they didn't do better in the transfer portal this year. I did like last year's recruiting class, but those guys are too young to be sticking in the lineup at this time. I like the offensive line recruiting class that they're building right now, but those, those kids are still in senior year of high school but football that's not this year. That's not this. So year. I, I, I do think that coach Fry is turning around the recruiting aspect of it, but like, you can get a running back or a wide receiver and have them um, be immediate contributors or a cornerback uh, be an immediate contributor as a freshman. But offensive line, that's just somewhere in between tough and impossible unless they're like an elite big body guy. And those guys just don't come along very long or very often. Uh, you know, there's no. not an Orlando pace in every recruiting class. I mean, look at Cena, man. Look, I mean, if you watched the Alabama, Texas game, um, Caden Proctor, who I believe was the best, if not one of the best offensive tackles in last year's recruiting class. Uh, started as a true freshman left tackle for Alabama and got smoked all night. He got absolutely smoked. Playing on the offensive line as a true freshman is a near impossible task. Because even like when, uh, yeah, I just, like I said, e- even when it does happen, a lot of times, like Paris Johnson, for example, started as a freshman, but at guard before they moved him out to left tackle. You know what I mean? Like it's, 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 it's tough to turn around an offensive line from a talent deficient standpoint. <laughs> Speaking right, of the I- offensive line, the G men are garbage. Why is it always left tackle such a tough spot? Cause it's the toughest go, go to the NFL and look who makes the most money along the offensive line. It's all left tackles. It's the toughest spot to play on the offensive line. That's why. And not only is it the toughest spot to play, but it's also the most noticeable if that player is failing. Mm -hmm. So Coach Day, Coach Day does say here, uh, he he does acknowledge they have an urgency on the offensive line. They want it now. He says there were some good things, but they need more consistency. They have the talent. They need to make the schematics simple. Effort Mm -hmm. and execution is what they need. That's probably pretty telling. We need to make the schematic simple. You have a transfer player. You have four new starter, or excuse me, three new starters. Um, maybe the offensive line are think is thinking too much. Maybe they gotta take the. Maybe they gotta take some pages out of the offensive line playbook, um, and and simplify some things and get the guys going instead of thinking. I, I personally don't think it's, it's just the offensive line. I, I think it's, I think it's both sides. I think both sides, offense and defensive side are not getting 
I, push I, that they that they should. I agree. Should I agree with getting. that. The defensive here's the, the difference being that the defensive line is not talent deficient. Um, there's no exactly. There's no excuse for the defensive line to not be able to push around Youngstown State last weekend. There was there's no excuse. There was let me say this. Barely, and this that was a for for an FCS team. And when you can respond, Kyle, when I'm done talking, you can say, yeah, for an FCS team and you'll be correct. OK, you'll be correct. OK, noted. But for an FCS team, that was a bunch of fifth and sixth year guys. Four of them had starts under their belt. They were all over 300 pounds. Like that was an abnormal offensive line for an FCS school. That being said, it was still an FCS school offensive line. Yes. But if you listen to yes. Know Your Enemy on Thursday, we told you that was a pretty good FCS offensive line. That was a pretty good offensive line. Now everyone say this with me. For the FCS. For the FCS. It's still an F- not, it's not a good off it's a good offensive line for the FCS. It's still an, F- an FCS offensive line, however. Yeah, not not enough, not enough leverage. I, I feel that I think both sides, you're not they're not getting low enough, the getting low enough to get that push that they need to. I mean, you got you got a week and a half now to two weeks to well, less than two weeks now to get it all straightened out here because Notre Dame yeah, Notre Dame showed some weakness last weekend, and we'll cover that in uh, the Collegiate Chaos episode. But it's, yeah, I'm, I'm I don't feel comfortable as a as a Buckeye fan uh, going over going over to Notre Dame here. No, I, I'm not either. All right, let's let's go ahead and jump into our Scarlet and Grade, where Ohio State beat Youngstown State thirty five to seven, and of those thirty five points, Jared. Only seven in the ha- in the second half for Ohio State. Yeah, I, I don't. I'm going to say this again. I said this last week. I'm going to say this again. One, the offensive lines. It's it's hard to score points even against the F- an FCS school when when your offensive line is playing poorly. So number one, that that's the issue. Number two. Ohio State's using like 10% of their playbook. These games are nothing more than scrimmages on the way to Notre Dame. That is what these games are. I hope you're right. Well, Spikes, please please realize that I did start with that the offensive line is bad. So don't hope that I'm right about that. Like... I, although I am right about that. So, I mean, the fir- first half, I, I was. So I, I, I when... am saying that I am saying that whether it be Indiana or Youngstown State or next week against directional Kentucky. They're not putting much on film and that's on purpose. They're not running a sophisticated version of the Ohio State offense and that's on purpose. Part of me thinks that they're per- that they're keeping Evan Pryor out of the game. This, this is some tinfoil hat shit. But part of me is like, oh, they they're keeping the car cover on Evan Pryor so Notre Dame doesn't know what's coming. <laughs> I'm listening. Like, <laughs> and uh. is that is that real? I don't know. But that's what I because there's, there's all this hype around Evan Pryor, and I don't know if he's even gotten a snap at this point. Um, oh, I, I haven't seen him on the field yet. I haven't if seen he, him on if the he's field. gotten a snap, it's been on special teams. Um, but yeah, I, I posted some uh, stats there. So in the first half, Hossie had I don't know three hundred thirty had three hundred thirty nine yards in the first half and one hundred forty three in the second half. There definitely there was definitely some miscues. Uh, yeah, just the second half, Hossie was just awesome all out of whack there and yeah 
definitely definitely was hoping to see a little bit more points. Like I felt I would have felt more comfortable if Ohio State scored another touchdown or two to make it to make the score look better there. But yeah, it's the second half was just definitely not 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 where it's supposed to be. Can you say my name? <laughs> be care be be careful, Zach. Uh you're gonna make Austin jealous with that name. Um, Kyle, do, do, are we doing? Let's, are we moving? Let's let's let's, let's, let's talk about. Sure, let's 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 go ahead and do the grades here. Uh, I was going to say we talked a lot of bad about this game, but there's there's some there's some goods here, so I'll I'll cover some of that in our in our grades here. So we'll start off with coaching, Jared. I'm actually going to pull up last week's. Uh, where is it at? Last week's. Uh, grading and i want to compare what we did last week to this week here so let's start with the coaching staff jared yeah what kind of grade would you give the coaching staff um i don't know that i i don't it's such a such a scrimmage that like i don't even know um I think I'll just do a B because I don't really have a strong opinion one way or the other. So I think I'll just go a B. Okay. So I, I, I'm going to give him a C plus. I'll give him a C plus. It's better than last week, but still still not what it, it should be. So last week, Jared, you gave Ohio State an A against Indiana. And then this week you're you're giving them a B. So worse than worse than what they did against. Indiana. It, right? uh, it, I, it's Youngstown State. Like, I don't know. Like, what well, what's a spectacular coaching day against Youngstown State even look like? Y- you know what I mean? How, how do you have a spectacular coaching day against Youngstown State? What right, does that even look here, like? Yeah, Chet here has C and C minus here. So. All right. Quarterback here. Last week, I gave a C. You gave a B. There here. was no spread, Bulldoggy. The game yeah, wasn't on was the none. board. So that means I, I think someone should added have it been, late. should have won by 45 plus. Is how I look at it. Uh, the quarterback here, I better. I think better than what we saw lot uh, the previous week. So and I gave a C the previous week. So I'll I'll say it's a little bit better here. So I'll say B minus. I think B minus. They especially early on, you got your you got your main wide receiver the ball and often and made some really good throws, but then it kind of died down as the game went on. But I think early on I was I was I was I felt better coming away from this game I'm, than I did after the Indiana Indiana game. I'm coach I'm gonna I'm going to grade specifically Kyle McCord. He's the quarterback. I'm I'm done having I'm done having the conversation. Kyle McCord's the quarterback. Um, I'm going to grade Kyle McCord. And again, we, we have to keep in mind, if if CJ Stroud put up the performance against Youngstown State that, that Kyle McCord did, I'd give him like a C. Because the expectations were different. Right? Kyle McCord in his second ever start. No, I'm not counting Akron from 2021. Kyle McCord in his second ever start gets graded on a more friendly curve and I see progression. He's settling in. He's getting better, not great at his progressions, but for a second start, he's getting pretty okay at his, at his progressions. He's still tunnel visioned at times. We, we talked about this already earlier in the show. Um, He's he, believe it or not, after two starts, he's not perfect yet. Yeah. But for a guy with two starts, I think he's on his way to looking pretty good. All right. I, I don't think it's A minus yet, but, but we'll, Kyle, we'll disagree on that. It's it's a it's a curve. It's expectation. I, I understand. I understand. All right. O line or running back. Running Sorry. back is next. I'm, look at my notes. Running backs here. When they got the ball, I liked yeah. what I saw. When they got the ball, I liked it. When so, the blocking uh, give, was good, I liked it as well. Yeah, I'm going to say an A minus. 
for the running back, I was, again, with the limited carries that they got, I, I liked, I was very, very happy to see Trevion and the way he was running. He was running with a purpose. I'd like watching him chip on a in, lead block out of the power eye, too. And the hold <laughs> call they got on him yes. was crap. <laughs> Yes. By the way, we, I think yeah. we're officially adopting uh, Chip Chop and Chisel. Ooh, ooh, I like Chisel. I like. That. I think chip, we're going Chop, chip and chisel. Chop and Chisel. All right. So, all right, Jared and I give A minus for the running back. Any other comments, Jared? Uh, just that I wish the O line was blocking for the running backs better, but oh. I think that takes us into our into our next one. Yep, O line. Not not week, Chisholm. Chisel. Yeah. Uh, so last week you and I gave D's for the for the O line. I think they did a little bit better, so I'll give them a D plus. <laughs> I would I say D plus because of my expectation from this offensive line, and they should be dominant, dominant, and they weren't. So D plus. Um. Again, we're grading based off of a curve. Um, I thought Indiana actually has. And yes, I meant to say Indiana, like a good core of defensive tackles. Um, and, and I do. And, and again, I will go to bat for just saying that Youngstown State actually has a pretty good offensive line. But they didn't have anything on the defensive line that I, I think was overly impressive or overly. I don't know. It's you're going up against an FCS school and you're not getting a push off of the line. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go like a D and I'm only going to not make that an F because I thought they were okay in pass pro, not great in pass pro. I thought they were okay in pass pro. Um, if I was grading the offensive line based purely off of rush blocking, they'd get a straight F. All right. Um, wide receivers here. Tight ends right. is what I have on mine. Okay, great. We'll, we'll, we'll do tight ends. Uh, tight ends, uh, not not as not as active as what we saw in week one. Here, we only had one catch all game here, and that was from uh, uh, Scott Junior. Here, he had one catch for nine yards. But I think in the running block, there there were some there were some great plays and on the on the running plays there. So I'd say, I'd say B, I'd say it's solid B here for, for the tight ends. Kyle, I was literally just sticking a B in mine. Um, the, I agree. By the way, that one pass that G Scott jr. Had was one of the more spectacular looking Devin Brown plays. Uh, again, Devin yes. Brown just looks straight up spectacular at times. Um, but it's just the consistency is not quite there. Yep. All right. Wide receivers here. This is the kind of game that we were, we Until were hoping to see. Deep, here. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is what we were hoping to see with our wide receivers here. You got your main receiver, seven catches, two touchdowns. Uh, you got your pretty much your one B receiver, Mecca, five catches and a touchdown. And yeah, I, I was very happy to see what the wide receivers did in this game. So I'd give them, I'd give them an, uh, like an A minus. I'm giving them a C. Uh, mm. The stats looked fine, but I thought, I think the stats looked fine mostly because of some missed tackles and, and they, ma they made them miss the tackles, but missed tackles in the secondary. Um, I love Marvin Harrison Jr. I love Marvin Harrison Jr., he feels like he's kind of jogging through the first couple of games. I think he's made some spectacular plays, but I think he's also just had some drops that didn't make any sense. He just in the, in the Indiana game, he kind of steps out of bounds. Um, maybe they're just not again. And, and maybe the, my, Again, Kyle, we're, we're grading based off of expectation. This should, the wide receiving core at Ohio State, it's not only the best wide receiving core in the country, it might be the best position group in the country. They had three, your, your, your two receivers had over 200 yards reception and three touchdowns. 
against that's a, that's Youngstown a pretty darn State. good game. That's a pretty darn good game, especially compared to the first game that they had. I think Mar- Mar- Marvin Harrison Jr., I, again, it's based off of expectation, and the stats don't matter to me, honestly, especially against right. Youngstown State. The stats don't really matter. I gave... I'm talking up uh, Trivian Henderson so much. I gave the running backs an A minus and their stats are not spectacular. I am judging based off of the performance I'm seeing with my eyeballs, not Marvin Harrison Jr. being left alone for a 71 yard touchdown that he and and a touchdown for a Mecca Buka in which he did break a tackle acknowledged and he did. He looked great breaking that tackle acknowledged, but he literally walks into the end zone on a long touchdown. What we saw out of the wide receivers were some long, spectacular plays, but also like some drive killing drops and some just kind of sloppy, lazy play at times. I just it's more of a they're spectacular, but they're not consistent right now. And yeah, the the lackluster performance by the wide receivers, I am going to chalk that up to the using 10% of the playbook and not showing anything off to Notre Dame in part. I I think there might be a little bit of a motivation issue as far as waiting for Notre Dame as well. Um, Fair enough. All right. Defensive ends, Jared. Moving on to the defensive side here, Earl. You got defensive line as a whole. Well, this will make. It I, I can put a sla- I can put a slash in there if you want to. That, that, that's fine. No, D- defensive line is fine as, as a whole here. Um, yeah, bad. Not not a good not a good game. They they had like barely any kind of push. Any time that you try to get a try to get some sort of pass rush going, it was pretty much near just non-existent at all in this game. It's. Not not where it should be here, especially against an FCS school here. You only you only had two sacks here, and yeah, not not good here. I'm I'm going to give them a like a straight D for the defensive line. I'm going to give them a especially, C, especially but... with my expectations. Yeah, exactly. With the expectations here, you have you have a really good interior defensive line. And then you have very good defensive ends to be able to get some pressure on the quarterback and they're just not doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they're allowing, I'm, I'm going to do a C minus instead of a D again, because that was a very like Navy offensive line that Youngstown state had. Again, a lot of fifth year, sixth year, giant old men playing offensive line um, and not not what you would normally expect from an FCS school. That being said, they're still getting a C minus. They still underperformed. I'm still not happy. But that's just I'm I'm, I'm going to give them a little bit of a bump only because that's a better offensive line than I think anyone's willing to give it credit for credit for. Yeah. All right, linebackers here. Uh, what did we give the linebackers last year? Uh, we gave them an A last year. But, last but I just want to say here. something. Mike Hall had a drive in which he absolutely took over the football game. He did. He had a drive. He had a drive where he took over, yes. A drive. Why? That should just be, that should just be all the time. And it doesn't have to be Mike Hall all the time. Sometimes it can be Ty Leak, and sometimes it can be JT, and sometimes it can be Sawyer, and sometimes it can be Hamilton. Um, but the type of play that we saw from Mike Hall on that one drive should have been what that defensive line was doing all night. Yeah. Yep, agreed. Linebackers. So linebackers last week, we gave them an A. I, I, I guess maybe like a, like a B plus. I would say um, I. Nothing, nothing spectacular, but they didn't make any, any mistakes. They made some good open field tackling here. They just they did what they needed to. Uh, yeah, I'd say B plus. I don't really have much to say with the linebackers. They they, they're doing what they should be doing. Yeah, I, I thought 
and I'm not I'm not putting this all on the linebackers. I just uh, haven't decided where else I'm going to talk about this. So I'm going to talk about this here, I guess. Um, you said B plus, right? Yeah. Um, the defense in general looked very. So against Indiana, I what I saw was a very together defense. I saw a very gap sound, responsibility sound, everyone sort of doing their part defense. Indiana, I saw a bunch of guys breaking contain, leaving their gaps. I saw I saw a lot of well, what, what some would call like hero ball. I think there were some stat. I think some guys are playing Youngstown State. They knew they were playing Youngstown State. And I think there are some dudes out there stat hunting, chasing plays. They instead of like keep instead of taking care of their responsibility. And, and I think it hurt Ohio State a few times. Um, and I, again, I'm not necessarily putting that on the linebackers exactly. It's just that that was something I wanted to mention and I hadn't mentioned it yet. So I'm mentioning it here. All right, uh, DBs, or I guess corners here. I guess it's one of those, I, th I think we mentioned it last week too. Uh, if you don't really talk too much about the DBs, they, they, they did what they should be doing, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, they gave up a little bit more yard. Oh, did they? Did they really? Yeah, yeah. They gave there was up that a one bit bad drive. Thing. They they did have that one bad drive, but other than that, they they were okay. They 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 did they did what they needed to do. 135 yards, uh, let up in the air. They had an interception as well. Uh, so I, yeah, I'd I'd say I would say like an A minus. Um, yeah, did what they I, needed to do here. I put an A minus as well. Um, Cam Martinez had like one bad drive. That was where. Um, I've forgotten his first name, uh, Tom Zach. Uh, I can only think of Mike for obvious reasons. Um, Burke looked good again. Burke is a monster. Burke is back in. Uh, He's back. Burke, we we're we're seeing Denzel Burke's final form. Um, I I literally we uh, in the Discord server. At the end of every half, I write my first half thoughts or at the end of the first half, I write my first half thoughts. Um, if, this is what I wrote under DBs, um, DBs, early mistakes for Cam Martinez. Iggy needs to work on tackles. Burke is not a man. He is an island. That That's how yes. I feel about Denzel Burke. Um, by, by the way, Iggy needs to work. I, I I didn't I don't have this screenshot in here, but at one point in the Discord server, I said something along the lines of Iggy knows how to hit. Iggy knows how to grab. Iggy's not a good technical tackler. Like, I feel like if, if he gives up a catch, he's giving up like two yards. Because the because uh, the wide receiver is going to get to follow or is going to get to like fall over on him giving up, like mm -hmm. I said, an additional two yards. Um, but yeah, I think for the most part, the quarterbacks did a good job. Yep. They, yeah, Youngstown found, found some, uh, found some things going positive for them against Iggy for a couple of drives there, which is what you mentioned about uh, him needing to work on tackles. I, they, they got Iggy a few times when Iggy was in a bail coverage. And they just sort of threw it in front of him. And that's just that's just going to happen. That's that's just going to happen sometimes. Fair. All right. Safeties. And by the way, the wide receiver that was over there uh, that they got Iggy on a couple of times, that dude has NFL potential. It's Bryce Oliver. Bryce Oliver has NFL potential. Might be the only guy on the Youngstown State Youngstown State team to have NFL potential right now, but he does have NFL potential. All right, uh, safeties, Jared. I same thing as the corners. <laughs> uh, didn't let anything deep um, pass them there. So I, I, I guess an I guess an A as well as I, if I have nothing negative to say with the safeties, why why hurt them? So an A. 
Yeah, uh, I thought Don Carter had a couple less than spectacular plays. Um, and that's really the only thing I even remember about the safety play, which, like we say, with defensive backs, we, we just kind of want to not notice you most days. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a good day. Um, and and then the last one here is is kicking here. No field goal attempts in this game. Perfect from from the uh, extra points. We had three punts, averaging 45 yards a punt. Two of those inside the, the 20 yard line in, in a minus. What did you have for safeties, by the way? Uh, in a. OK, I get I, I wrote down a minus for you. I'll take the minus off and, and, and a minus for me for for the for uh, the kicking. Yeah, that 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 I that I retained. Just, it's just a matter of what I actually retained and what I don't some days, Kyle. <laughs> um, yeah. Quick talking points I had in here. I don't have anything to say about the kicking. I just copied what Kyle said. I didn't have any strong right. opinions, so I just copied right. Kyle. Um, some quick talking points. McCord needs to be the guy, period, done, over. Um, offensive line, struggling. Um, no push on the run. Uh, s- s- and, and like I know everyone's picking on Simmons, but his, his hand tech is very bad. And I, I say that partially... Hand technique is what I mean by hand tech, by the way. Um, His hand tech is very bad. And and I say that not to pick on him, but to say that that's very fixable. Uh, I I think if they simplify the playbook, which is something Ryan Day said, and I think if they can sure up his hand tech, I, I think he can, you know, get get moving in a positive direction. Uh, one of the things I notice is that he kind of, he punches when he is run blocking, which is, is something that they, when I say punch, it's, it's an open hand shove, but it's just, it's what they call it. And it's something you do a lot when you're pass blocking is, is, is punch you shove. Um, but that's not something you do when you're run blocking. I noticed that he's still like, things they got to work on right he's got some bad hand tech um if we get a good play on his side it's usually coming back for holding uh that's not fair sometimes it's hands to the face sometimes you need to engage and drive on the run no not sometimes literally all the time remember i was told this a thousand times growing up You're allowed to hold as long as you're holding inside. You you grab the chest plate of the shoulder pads. You grab onto that and you just push. You just go. <laughs> and, and I get that that's an oversimplification. And But the, if you're doing like a man-man block, if you're doing man-on-man blocking, if you're going big-on-big blocking, then sometimes it actually is that simple. And you... you you just engage and you move them. Fitting there. One, the one, I? I, I, I co-sign all of that. I'll just add one, one thing here in that. Uh, yeah. I know, I know, Spikes, I know, you I know didn't we ha- say I know, sometimes. I, know really, I don't know why really I added good that. Apologize. Rushing team here, but Trevion needs to get the ball more. Uh, that's, I think that's just one thing one more thing that I need that I wanted to add there. And and that'll come if, if Ohio state's able to figure out how to actually get first downs on third and shorts. Run blocking, shoving people. That's how. All right. Um, all right. Quickly here, Jared Buckeye leaves. Who you got, who you giving your offense, who you giving your Buckeye leaf on the offense? Buckeye leaf on the offset offense. I'm going to give, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's maybe too easy to do it, but I'm going to give it to McCord. He's making good progress. I think he I think there was a decent amount of improvement from week one to week two. And before someone says it, no, not because Youngstown State. Indiana's secondary isn't anything spectacular. And what I'm grading him on, what I'm appreciating him for 
is watching him move through his progressions more and for not throwing into double coverage as much. He still needs to work on his pre-snap reads and he still needs to yada, yada, yada. He's young. He's young. Okay. And there's still some giving young mine. person stuff to work through. I'm, I'm giving mine to Marvin Harrison Jr. He, it, it, this is the type of game that we expected and, and, he, and he did it. Uh, so who in the chat here? I see, I see one for a chip here. Uh, you're the fullback. <laughs> Give him a buck. I leave just to make up for that BS holding call. By the way, the refs were terrible. I don't like complaining about refs. It's bottom bar barrel commentary, but holy crap were the refs just, they tried to take a touchdown away from Henderson, despite the fact that the entire ball made it over the plane. The, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. got tackled and they didn't throw a pass interference. The holding call on Chip was complete crap. It was a yeah. terrible referee performance. All right. Defense here, Jared. I'm going to I'm going to give mine to Tommy Pickles here. Uh <laughs> Tommy Pickles Eichenberg, six tackles at a sack in the game, also a forced fumble here as well. Give mine to the pickles i'm going denzel burke um uh, pretty easily uh mm -hmm. it's they they had youngstown state had like two good drives one of the drives they get in for a touchdown that sucks um the second drive they were they were driving and then their quarterback who, who's a decent quarterback again fifth year senior old guy um you know, they were making some progress down the field again. And then he got cocky. Then, then he got a little, and then he got a little too confident, a little too cocky. And he decided, you know what? I'm going to throw it. Denzel Burke, Denzel Burke made him pay for it. Picked the ball off in the end zone. My Buckeye sticker goes to Denzel Burke. Got it. Don't, don't forget. Right. Just and, don't throw my, it. Denzel my, Burke. Yeah. My, just don't do my it. wild card, my wild or card. Do. I'm going to give it to, I'm going to give it to Henderson here. Uh, averaged over 11 yards a carry, has a pair of touchdowns, and caught a pair of um, passes as well, too. So I'll give mine to to Mr. What, what do we call him? Chisel. To Chisel. Chisel. <laughs> uh, Kyle, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to second you on that. I, I agree. Okay. Very awesome. All right. Um, I think that I think that about wraps it up here, Jared. Uh, another, this was another, uh, I guess you'd call it like a um, preseason game for Ohio State. They got one more here to try to fix things up here before their opening game in week four. Any, any last thoughts or comments about young, about the Youngstown State game? Um, in, in my, in my, for patience. <laughs> For the wild card. That's funny. Um, my halftime update post that I write in the Discord server, um, a couple other things I wrote in here that I think are worth noting. Um, I wrote, Fleming is great and underappreciated, very Jameson Williams. Um, yeah. And then I wrote, Marv is great, but two games in a row where a silly mistake ended a drive, sort of going back to what I was saying before. I wrote, I wrote like a couple lines for each position, but I want to point out what I said for running backs, which is simply Trey is back. Trey is back. This, this is this is the Henderson that we saw as a freshman. His is his uh, it was a plantar fasciitis, if I remember correctly, issue he had. He lost his cut. He lost his burst. He, he just was not himself all sophomore year. Uh, Trey's back. I don't care what the stats say. I don't care what the offensive line isn't giving him. Trey's back. Jared, I think I think that about wraps it up here. All right. That's the end of the show, Kyle. Um, we're running long, so I'm just going to straight go to Kyle's corner. Do you, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, I which the speediest of recoveries for J.K. Dobbins. Uh, he he uh, tears his Achilles out for the season. Uh, just another 
another painful injury for JK. He just cannot, he just cannot get over that injury bug here and just wish him the best. Mamas, don't let your kids grow up to be running backs. Which rule is that? That's one of the rules. Uh, an early favorites here, Jared uh, State favored 27 and a half to Western Kentucky. Sorry, what was it? 27 and a half. Interesting. One of the teens you believe. Yeah, it's it's one of the later ones. I would guess like 14 or 15, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, All right, and that's it, Jared. Yeah. What, one more note. One more note. This is from Austin, one of our mods in the Discord server. He wrote this on at 12.09, nine minutes after the advertised kickoff in the Discord server. There has been three commercials so far in this game. We're a minute 30 in. It's getting egregious. And they're, they took snaps away from the game to do this. This is why they changed the clock rules. It wasn't to shorten the games. The games are ending at the same time. Mm -hmm. they're at, they did it to add commercials. But we're suckers and we'll keep watching. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think anything can be done this year, but hopefully, hopefully they relook at this in the offseason and fuck no. Make adjustments. The the TV contract lasts till 2030, Kyle. All that stuff is written by very fancy lawyers with very iron plate language. Yeah, I, we're screwed. All right. Um <laughs> Zach just goes, yep. <laughs> All right, that's the end of today's show. Um, tonight's ending music is brought to you by Parade Rainer. They're a punk band out of the Columbus area. Once again, their name is Parade Rainer. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and lost it, Kyle. Lost it. I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Parade Rainer.